Hello there, it's Machine Dana. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Good to see you. If you're interested in Twitch, if you're interested in streaming, if you're interested in tips, tricks, advice, guidance, tutorials, and particularly if you've got Streamlabs, uh, then you may want to subscribe to the channel. I do quite a lot of those types of videos along with uh, streaming games as well. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. And of course, you're welcome to press the subscribe button below if you like. If you do find the video useful, at least please just give it a little thumbs up because it helps the discoverability of the video and other people then can find it useful. Also, it also does help me out as well. This video is um, it's quite an unusual video, really. So I've been streaming for around about two months and I've consumed a significant amount of content on YouTube about streaming to the extent where I felt I've needed to start to put out more content about it myself because I don't really agree with big portions of the advice that's given out there. Now, of course, with these things, a lot of it is very objective. There's a lot of factual advice you can get out there. Of course, with these things, you know, there's never any sort of right or wrong answer. A lot of the content that's out there at the moment for advice to, to, to especially new, newly starting streamers, is just rubbish. It's just not very good advice. There's a lot of people that are saying the same things. It's, you know, they're regurgitating the same sort of buzz, buzzwords. And I just don't know whether the advice extends to the, the specificity that it needs to. Specificity? Is that a word? Is it specific enough? It's not specific enough. This is kind of partially a, a guidance video, an advice video, but it's also partially a debunking video a little bit as well, because there are some ad bits of advice out there that just, I, I just, just don't marry up to reality. Um, when you're starting out as a, a Twitch streamer. Uh, and again, you know, I'm not like a super, super expert. I've I've still only been streaming for two months, but in the two months that I have been streaming, I've seen a pretty good degree of success in that period. I've got pretty high percentage viewership in relation to my followership. And I continue to get really, really good uh, compliments on my stream as well. So, and some of those compliments that I've got, direct compliments from complete randomers, have directly gone against the grain of some of the advice that is out there on YouTube. So, uh, and there's a lot of people that are very quick to kind of give the advice. And I just think a little bit more of a frank discussion uh, is needed. So you may not agree with everything I have to say. And honestly, I am all ears. Uh, there are ears under this headset. So uh, I'm all ears. Feel free to drop comments if you don't agree with anything that I'm saying. Uh, and also, you know, offer your own constructive advice as well. Um, as long as you can be specific and helpful, then that's going to be uh, that's going to be useful to have as part of the, the the response to this video. So, six things that I've noticed: advice that people give, where actually it's not quite right. There's other advice that's better. Uh, it's advice that people won't tell you or are too afraid to say. We'll just rattle through them. The first things first. The advice is always: don't invest money in streaming. Uh, you shouldn't spend money on streaming, uh, see how it goes first and so on and so forth. There are tens or hundreds of thousands of streamers that stream every single day. It's a highly fragmented, highly competitive market. It's very difficult to stand out whilst you're streaming. And it's even more difficult to stand out when you have virtually no viewership and, and you have no followers. It's extremely difficult, right? So you've got to do whatever you can to try and um, distinguish yourself and do something a little bit different and build up that loyalty, build up the viewership, build up the following. Now, Twitch, I think it's a common um, conception and it's not a misconception, it's, it's true. Twitch for discoverability is not particularly great, but I think they're getting better with it. I get the feeling they're doing a lot of different things to make that better, which I'll go through on a, a different video. You're still left in a position where actually if you're running a really poor quality stream, and we're talking about the fundamental things here, we're talking about is your audio good? Is your visuals, are they good? Uh, you know, can people hear you? Can they see the gameplay properly? Are you getting frame drops? A lot of things like that are actually controllable things uh, that you can actually put right before they're even wrong. You don't want someone turning up to your stream and simply walking away because the, even on a base level, the quality isn't there. They've not even had time to look at you as the broadcaster, as the entertainer at this point. And they may not even be interested in the gameplay at that point. They may just be turned off your stream by things that are in your control that you should be able to put right. So when people say don't invest money, now I, I, 
don't get me wrong, I can completely appreciate that not everybody can throw loads of money at the stream, and, and I'm not advocating spending loads and loads of money on streaming. I'm really not. But you can spend wisely, and there are a little, few little bits that you can do, like, for instance, getting a good microphone, or, for instance, you know, downscaling some of your stream attributes to fit the hardware that you've already got, or spending 20... Uh, 20 pounds or 20 dollars uh, on on fiverr to get a logo made for you these things like that you don't have to spend significant amounts of money but investing some money is going to help your stream and honestly in streaming one percent half of a percent two percent these little small increments are the things that just get you one step ahead of other people and it is highly competitive so it, it is you're essentially in a competition with other broadcasters for the traffic, the viewership traffic. Where people say don't invest money and don't invest, you know, in the stream, I think that's absolute rubbish. I really do. Um, if you can invest in the stream, then you should invest in the stream if you want to take it seriously. Now, this is very different if you're not so bothered about taking it seriously. It's a very casual thing. It's more of a hobby for you and you don't really care about the growth. That's completely different. If you're like that, then absolutely don't invest at all in the stream, only what you care to invest, that's fine. But if you're taking it seriously and you do want to grow and you want to build up a viewership and you want to take things to the next level, you will probably have to invest money. Now, I will just caveat this as well, and I've already mentioned that you don't need to spend insane amounts of money, but you need to bear in mind that whatever you invest, there's a pretty high chance you'll be able to recoup some of that money if the streaming doesn't work out for you. For example, if you spend £100 on a, a semi-good microphone, this is a HyperX Quadcast microphone I've got here. It was like £100. I've never spent £100 on a microphone before, and there's still microphones out there that are much better than this. Well, this was better than the headset microphone, which is now disabled, and the sound quality is significantly better as a result of it. I can sell this microphone for £50, £60, £70 on eBay if streaming doesn't work out for me. So there's still some residual asset value in the stuff that you buy. So as long as you're sensible with it, investing in the streaming isn't so much of a scary or a bad thing. And I really would recommend that if you can, invest in your own stream and you want to invest in your stream and you're taking it seriously that you should do that so that goes against the advice that i've seen on virtually every other single youtube video about uh, how to start streaming and what to and not not to do on streaming number two <laughs> if i can count number two uh don't have a schedule you, you don't need to have a schedule everyone says make sure you've got a schedule it helps a lot people need to know when you're online and so on and so forth i would say here it's more important that you give your idea your, your viewers a rough idea on when you're likely to be online you don't need to give them a square time N not not a single one of your viewers in in the short term or the long term right if you're a small uh twitch streamer or mixer or well mixer shut down bad example uh, if you're a YouTube streamer or whatever, nobody is waiting around ready to just jump on your stream as soon as you're streaming. It's just not how it works. The content is is take it or leave it content. People can watch a YouTube video. They can browse social media. They can watch other streamers. So nobody is waiting around with bated breath for you, the view, you, the broadcaster, you, the content creator. But there's a pretty high chance there'll be around anyway a number of your viewers that would like to tune in at a relatively regular time so i would advise having a rough schedule i would advise telling your viewers roughly when you're going to be around but you really do not need to implement a hard schedule uh, it's not essential to growing on twitch I i've grown fine without a schedule and um, i tell my viewers that i'll be on most evenings uh, at four or five five or six times a week i will be streaming and i give them a rough idea on times and not a single person has moaned about that and everyone always comes back to the stream and it's really really positive and there are no issues whatsoever yet i keep seeing youtube videos where they're saying you have to have a schedule you have to have a schedule it's just crazy totally crazy so you don't need to have a schedule but i would say try and give your users some idea of when you're going to be online a rough idea is is more than good enough set up all the social media accounts and make sure you're posting to social media it's really really difficult when you don't have a strong following already to get proper traction on all the social media platforms like TikTok or or 
Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and so on. Now, I'm not advocating people to not set up any of those channels. By all means, set them up, get them set up. But your stream is not gonna live and die on those social media platforms. The growth of your stream is not gonna live and die. Bear in mind, when you put a tweet out, all you're looking to do at that point is get some eyeballs on your content. And those people may immediately bounce away. Okay. The most important thing is that the stream itself, when people do turn up, is is of a quality that allows people to stay, watch you, and want to be compelled to see what you're doing in the longer term and become loyal, longer term viewers to your platform. So that means you don't need to rush to make seven different social media accounts only for them to have relatively the same content on. A lot of the time, the content's going to be focused around a game that you're playing or it'll be focused around when you're going to go live you can make it a little bit more playful okay you can post things that are a little bit more fun and a little bit more playful but when you're first starting out your time your time is going to be best invested by improving the stream by watching content on how you can improve the stream spending time actually doing the things that will allow you to learn new techniques and things like that to improve the production standard and the quality of your stream. These are things that will improve the stickiness of your stream and that will naturally result in and yield a higher viewership and better discoverability within Twitch itself, okay? So I'm not advocating don't set up the channels and I'm not saying that you shouldn't uh, use the social media platforms. I'm saying that it's not essential, okay? In the long term, it is essential but you don't need to rush to do all of those things. You don't need to waste your time on the social media platforms in, to begin with. Um, maybe maybe of the suite of seven or eight social media platforms that you have, look at one or two of them and focus in on one or two of them. Me personally, I found that I've had a, quite a lot of traction with Reddit, but twi uh, Twitter, not so much. Instagram, not so much. That might change in the future as I get to those, but you can only give so much time and it's better to give better quality time to a fewer number of platforms than it is to give a you know a lower quality amount of attention to a higher number of platforms because honestly people will just see it and turn away you're not going to get people hooked enough because you can't focus enough to get good quality content out on all of those platforms it's impossible unless you've got a team of people you're lucky enough to have a team of people that will do it for you you're not going to be able to put out the quality content on those social media platforms so set them up by all means use them a little bit but focus your time not on those focus your time mainly on the content on the stream perhaps on one or two of those social media platforms. For me, Reddit works pretty well. I do a little bit on YouTube, but it's mainly the streaming that I'm focused on getting right because I know that once that's right, I can do those things down the line. Uh, don't restream. I've, I've seen a lot. In fairness, the, the advice is pretty split on this. Um, restreaming, similar to the social media, there are certain nuances that you get in YouTube to Facebook gaming to Mixer before it was shut down uh, to Twitch and, and all the others. There are nuances to the platform that means that certain things you do for that particular streaming platform will be more effective than on the next platform. And if you're just putting out like a sort of a boilerplate stream to lots of platforms, the likelihood is that the discoverability is going to be higher. So you're probably going to get in front of more people but the likelihood is on each respective platform the standard of what you're doing will be comparably low to other people on the platform or at least to yourself if you were to do it on that platform only so it's better to do a really really good job on one platform because for instance let's take let's take um let's take twitch for example Twitch is, is quite renowned for its culture. It's quite renowned for its kind of memes and inside jokes. And obviously Twitch is the market leader. I think it's got like 65 or 67% of the market at the moment. That might've gone up since uh, Mixer disappeared. So it'll be interesting to see the stats for quarter two in 2020. But Twitch works and operates in a certain type of way. And it focuses in on the culture and on the togetherness and on the chat. Whereas with YouTube, it's a little bit more about the uh, the advice and, and a little bit more about the, the, the quality of the production. It's a little bit more about the discoverability. And, and also they work, the streams, they work in different ways as well. So having certain alerts work for one platform might not quite work for another platform. I'm not saying that restreaming will not work for anyone. 
here. This is not an absolute yes or no. It's not a binary thing. I'm saying that there's a pretty damn high chance that you'll do far better focusing your time and your effort on one platform, a streaming platform, than there is trying to spread yourself thinly managing multiple streaming platforms. It's already enough work to manage the social media that we've mentioned and the stream itself and uh, your schedule and all the other stuff. It's already a lot of work. If you're then also managing multiple platforms on top of that, it gets really, really difficult. I would not I'm not saying that restreaming won't work. I'm not saying it can't work. I'm saying it's highly unlikely that this works. I'm yet to know of many big, big streamers that have done well through restreaming. You know, most of the streamers are dedicated to a single platform and they do that platform really, really well. Um, prove me wrong. I'd love to be proven wrong here. If someone says to me, X person streams on these seven different platforms and does really well from it, then I will, I will happily stand corrected on that particular point. Uh, I just take the view that you can do a much better job on one platform than you can do trying to spread your time. Don't talk if nobody is watching. <sighs> so if nobody is watching, you should be talking all the time. I think that's rubbish. If, you're, if, if you know that nobody is viewing you, even if there's a slight delay on the updating of, of the view count, uh, so if you're sat there with no viewers and eventually it pops to one or pops to two, you really want to be saving your energy and your breath and your motivation for the times when the people are there rather than waiting and talking and wasting your breath and your voice and all these things uh, and, and possibly getting very demotivated in the process, talking to nobody. It's good practice. So the, the advocate for talking when no one is there, and it, the advocate for that is that it at least is good practice. Um, but the thing is, you're more likely to do a better job when the people are there if you're saving yourself for when they are there. You know, you're more likely to be a bit more enthusiastic. And it might only be 5 or 10%, but you, that extra enthusiasm might be the thing that keeps the person there longer, makes them follow you and makes them come back, which means next time you're not talking to nobody, you're talking to that one person. And then that then gets infectious and can grow arms and legs, so to speak. Grow arms and legs, it goes a bit more on the viral side and then compounds itself and you can get the growth from there. If you're just if you're streaming for 11 hours and let's say you only have viewers for three of those 11 hours, eight hours of you talking away, being demotivated, losing your voice, you know, monotonous, monotone type discussions, it's not gonna help you, it really isn't. Save your voice, save the focus for when the people turn up and then make sure that your interaction with those people is really, really good, really enjoyable. Make sure it's genuine, much more likely to get a higher yield on those people staying around for longer, for you to then talk to longer. <laughs> so if people say don't um, make sure that you talk even when nobody's there, it's complete rubbish that, complete rubbish. I think that's the worst bit of advice anyone could give, I really do. Don't network, yeah. So people say you should network. And, and this one's probably the most infuriating out of them all. I mean, it really is. You need to network. What do you mean by network? Like, what's networking? Like, give me something more specific. And people will go, oh, go, go to TwitchCon. Go to an event. Well, what if you can't get to TwitchCon? What if you can't get to San Diego? What if you can't get to wherever it's being held in Europe? Well, that's that out the window. Well, network via social media. Well, yeah, you can do that. But what if you're focusing your time on the streaming and not that? The way I, I, I frame the networking, and it's a little bit more useful to frame it in this way, networking is at its very essence and at its very core. Networking is just socializing with people. And, and even that, it's probably too loose. It's, it's not specific enough. So socializing, what do I mean by socializing? Take genuine interest in what other people are doing. Even if you're doing that for a selfish reason, Make the selfish reason at least self-improvement rather than networking to get a follower. Networking to get a follower, networking to get a raid, or networking to get some extra exposure is a bad reason to network or to socialize. If you socialize because you're on someone's channel, because you, you in your own, through your own eyes, you're trying to get feedback from their channel for things to use on your own channel, is a far better way of socializing and they appreciate the input that you give them on their own stream go out of your way to help them helping them will actually help you directly because you're learning relearning the thing that you already know you're learning it better than you did the first time um, 
So socialize, talk to them, say hi, ask them about different elements of the stream, ask them what worked. You know, that's the selfish element is the learning bit. And it's okay to be selfish if you're doing it to learn and get better. But the give and get there is that you also need to try and give them some constructive feedback as well, if you have it. If there's no constructive feedback to give, i.e. they've got a really, really crispy stream, there's not much you can do at that point, but maybe compliment them instead. So networking is just rubbish. It's a capture all word that people use, particularly in streaming advice videos. Uh, it's, a, it's a load of rubbish. I mean, it really is. It's not useful to say, go and network. The way you interpret uh, networking versus the thousands of other people that might be watching those videos, it's com it, it, is, it might be wrong. It might be completely different. So actually you just need to be yourself and socialize on other people's streams. Getting to know other streamers on a more person-to-person -person level makes the streaming experience much more rewarding. It makes it more enjoyable. You can build genuine friendships over Twitch. There's there's a few people I've got to know, even in the short period of time that I've been streaming, and they just seem like really good people. I don't feel like I'm networking with them. I just feel like I'm socializing with them. They are literally the sorts of people I could go for a beer with. And it's it's you know it's as simple as that. So don't see it so much as a forced networking like scripted thing that you need to do to see it as a natural socializing on someone's stream taking an interest in what they're doing and the caveat there is you obviously need to go to streams that that you would find interesting right if you if you continually play first person shooters and you're really interested in first person shooters and high octane high action shooters and those types of games it's no good going to you know a chess a chess twitch stream if you don't know how to play chess and you've got no interest in learning how to how to play chess no matter how good that person's stream is you are not going to be taking interest in their streaming and that so-called networking or rather the socializing it'll be forced it won't be something that you'll be able to really take a lot of value from or add value to their stream so you know try and join streams that are of interest to you uh, and someone that perhaps you like something about what they're doing on their stream or if you've got some constructive feedback and the caveat there is don't go straight in for the jugular don't go straight in and say here's the list of things i'd improve about your stream i mean you've really got to give and take some compliments and some constructive feedback and then ask them to come into yours and give you some constructive feedback don't don't be afraid to follow other people but don't spam the follows there's no point in like sending out you know 500 follow requests for people that you're probably not going to join the streams of it's probably better for you to, to to join some channels if you like what you see and you can see yourself being able to socialize with that person then maybe drop the follow and see what happens and if you find yourself not really going to their channel then unfollow them you know you're not a useful follower to them if you're not viewing their content in the long term in the same way that they won't be a useful follower to you if they're not jumping in on your stream giving you the feedback socializing with you and enjoying your content I hope, I really, really hope this video is taken in the way it's intended. It's just a little bit of frank, more honest, like, you know, level headed feedback about some of the rubbish uh, guidance that's out there at the moment. Uh, I'm surprised that so many people make these crap videos where they're just regurgitating the same advice. They watch two or three themselves and then they go, oh, I can do that. It's rubbish. Like, common sense has to prevail. <laughs> if you enjoyed this, Feel free to subscribe, feel free to like, otherwise hopefully you've taken something from it and have a lovely day. Take care.